Okay, welcome to Module 9. Uh, we're going to be discussing a couple of different uh, topics uh, divided up by lecture. Uh, in the first two lectures, we'll be discussing uh, issues of race and ethnicity and also prejudice and discrimination. Uh, lecture 3, uh, we're going to discuss gender issues and Lecture 4, uh, issues of aging. Uh, but you'll see that all these topics are pretty closely related uh, despite having different focuses. Um, so in this first lecture, we're going to discuss race and ethnicity. Um, these words are commonly used interchangeably uh, in the um, uh, general social uh, sphere, uh, but sociologically, uh, we draw very uh, profound distinctions between them. So what is the difference between race and ethnicity? Typically, when we're talking about race, we're talking about uh, any large group of people, which is defined by inherited physical characteristics which might separate them from other groups. Uh, so clearly when we talk about racial characteristics, we might think about things like uh, skin color or eye shape or uh, hair type. Okay? And clearly when we're talking about race, we're talking about biological distinctions. Okay? And these are things, these are physical characteristics which are handed down uh, hereditarily. So a person inherits these characteristics from the people that came before them. Um, and when we talk about race, there's a couple of myths that exist uh, about race. Um, one is uh, the idea of uh, what would constitute a pure race. So in other words, a uh, race that uh, is in no way um, mixed with any other type of race. Uh, that clearly does not exist. Um, there's no such thing as a pure race. All human beings share racial characteristics with other groups. So um, as a person who's uh, uh, personally done uh, a DNA uh, background uh, check, uh, Ancestry.com or those other types of things, but I have done one of one of those, um, you get back the results of something like that and you can clearly see that uh, hereditarily we come from many, many, many different places and of course uh, evolutionarily uh, it's postulated and widely supported uh, that we all have a common uh, human ancestor. Um, so the distinctions that we make among race uh, are, again, mainly a social construction. The second myth being that there's uh, that any of these biological or physical characteristics that are inherited that we sometimes uh, define as racial characteristics in any way are superior to other traits. So again, differences among things like skin color, eye shape, uh, earlobe shape, hair type, um, none of these inherently give us any advantage over any other person on the planet. Some of them we can say were adaptions to living in different types of environments or different types of physical conditions, but in no way do they convey a sense of superiority. So there's no such thing as a pure race uh, and there's no such thing as superior biological characteristics that we sometimes call racial. So, uh, race is, is, again, another issue that sometimes comes up is how many races are there? And uh, the answer is nobody knows because the definition of biological race is so broad uh, or you could conversely say so narrowly defined uh, the answer is uh, as few as one, and I've often heard this from students in class when I ask that question, how many races are there? One, the human race, and you can clearly make that distinction uh, that all other characteristics um, that we would consider to be racial characteristics are probably much more akin, uh, and the analogy I sometimes make, and sometimes hesitantly because uh, not a lot of people are necessarily comfortable with this analogy is, uh, well, some of the things we call racial characteristics are actually more akin to uh, breeds. So if we are, and again, people are unfamiliar or, or uncomfortable with that in a lot of degrees because it kind of makes an analogy between human beings and animals, uh, but clearly we are animals, um, that one of the distinctions of a race uh, would be, uh, you know, that people of different races then would not be able to interbreed and create viable offspring. Well, we clearly know that in the human race, it is clearly it is possible for basically any two people, uh, theoretically possible, 
even of different racial characteristics, to still produce viable offspring. So um, we don't have these racial characteristics which separate us into different races. Uh, but then again, we sometimes use that. So if you fill out a census form, it'll ask you, what is your race? And there, there could be as few as four uh, categories, or as many as six, or if you really want to be specific, as many as 16 or 60. So race is a, is a culturally defined uh, explanation of some of the differences that we as human beings portray through our physical characteristics. Sociologically, we are much more interested in defining ethnicity. Uh, ethnicity, are, or what is an ethnic group, is a large, again, a large group of people that are based to a certain degree on common ancestry. Certainly we'll say that these people have uh, some, um, you know, common uh, physical characteristics which are generally handed down through heredity. However, much more important is this idea of cultural heritage. So uh, these you know, people that describe themselves as an ethnic group may come from a specific region in the world, um, but more often than not, they share a very similar culture. So that can be broken down into things like language, religion, clothing, music, uh, types of food, uh, ways of structuring families. Okay? And clearly those things are not biological in nature. They're not handed down through heredity as we talked about in an earlier module, we talked about socialization. These are things that are learned uh, and gained through our interaction with other people in social ways. So ethnicity uh, is much more relevant to the majority of you know, sociology than this idea of race, which is a, a very difficult thing to define and uh, 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 rather like I said, a, a social definition based on um, who's defining it. So when we talk about differences, especially within a society, and uh, especially the United States, which is a very pluralistic society made up of many, 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 many different types of ethnic groups, then we get into these discussions of what constitutes a minority group or a dominant group. And a common misperception, again, about the word minority group or the term minority group is based on the definition of the word minority, which we normally think of as a numerical minority, so in, in, you know, uh, constituting less than half of the population, so 49 or 49 percent and below would be less than half the population, and then we normally think of that as constituting then a minority, so we're basing that on numbers. However, when we talk about uh, racial and ethnic um, issues, and we talk about a minority group, a minority group does not necessarily have to be the numerical minority. It's much more based on um, regard within the society. So the minority group is a group that is singled out and subject to some type of discrimination. Generally, the ethnic traits or the common cultural heritage uh, practiced by a minority group is in some way regarded by the dominant culture or the dominant group, which we'll talk about that in just a second, as somehow undesirable. So uh, whether or not it's the language, the religion, the clothing, uh, or just a combination of all those, those ethnic uh, traits or those cultural heritage traits are regarded largely as being uh, undesirable. Um, minority groups tend to intermarry uh, within each other. In other words, uh, sometimes by choice, other times much more uh, can be by, uh, by prescription. Um, but they are not necessarily the numerical minority. One of the best examples of this is uh, when we talk about um, the country of South Africa. So in the later part of the 20th century, uh, the country of South Africa was, was uh, dominated by a practice called apartheid, uh, wherein the minority group was defined as uh, descendants of Africans, uh, uh, largely black Africans, natives to the continent of Africa and uh, were subject to discrimination and in fact uh, made to live in areas uh, in the interior of the country called homelands where they were largely kind of a, a captive population. They, were, they had to live on those homelands. Uh, they're only let out generally to work or uh, you know sometimes even on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes on a kind of a visa basis. 
um, and then put back in these areas, which is, uh, and they're obviously subject to a lot of economic and cultural discrimination. However, they constituted approximately 80% of the population of the country. The dominant group in that situation were uh, descendants of white settlers in Africa, Dutch primarily, uh, who in their own word called themselves Afrikaners, uh, which is a Dutch word, Dutch word meaning uh, of Africa. Uh, however, we clearly know there were descendants of European uh, settlers there, and they, again, were defined as the dominant group because they had greater power privilege and social status and, dom and uh, discriminated against the minority group. So in that definition, we clearly saw that a dominant group can be the numerical minority within a country and the minority group actually may be numerically uh, have superior numbers. Um, so again, don't confuse minority group with numer uh, numbers. It has to do uh, with the relationship of discrimination and power which we'll define and discuss a little more in the next uh, lecture. Um, among ethnic groups, we see and we can measure, uh, to a certain degree, ethnic identity. This is, again, uh, a lot of times when we consider ethnic groups, and in a lot of cases, uh, ethnic minority groups, we can some, uh, sometimes then decide, okay, uh, how much ethnic identity is a particular group uh, displaying? we can say that groups that display low ethnic identity within a society are basically, for the most part you could say, attempting to integrate to or look like the dominant group. So in other words, they're not standing out or uh, quote unquote kind of practicing uh, their ethnicity to a large degree. So it may be that they are not wearing what we might consider to be uh, ethnic or native clothing, or they're not speaking a specific language that's not the dominant language. Uh, they might not be, uh, like I said, practicing a religion or eating certain types of food or listening to certain types of music. And generally, it's usually an attempt to, like I said, fit into the dominant group. So groups with low ethnic identity tend to be more assimilating to the dominant group and fitting in and typically are then subject to less amounts of discrimination. Minority ethnic groups that practice a high degree of ethnic identity uh, definitely stand out from the crowd. So examples of this in our society might be, uh, for example, uh, Hasidic Judaism. Uh, so you know, if I said to you, what, you know, how, do you, how can you identify a Hasidic Jew, you might say that's probably, in males, in case of dress in all, black clothing, hat on and a large beard and uh, uh, hair curls, which are uh, a symbol of uh, religious faith. So um, to a certain degree, most ethnic groups can be put on this scale from low to high of uh, practicing of ethnic identity. And again, this can vary from time to time and even among individuals. Um, and any attempt to maintain anything above just low ethnic identity, uh, to d maintain a certain degree of ethnic identity, uh, even among groups or families, uh, is sometimes termed as ethnic work. So these are how groups or individuals within a society kind of construct or recognize their, their ethnicity. So it may be speaking uh, a, a ethnic language at home or wearing certain types of clothing cooking certain types of food at certain times, maintaining certain ethnic holidays, uh, maintaining, let's say, ancestry or family trees, uh, those kind of things uh, are all what we'll call ethnic work to maintain at least some degree of ethnic identity.